Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're going to be deploying Kubernetes using Talos OS. What's Talos OS? Let's have a quick primer. Well Talos OS is an operating system specifically designed to host Kubernetes. It's super lightweight because it's purpose-built and it has a really interesting UI out of the box. I'll show you that later in the video. Why am I considering using this? Well for those reasons, custom built OS, super lightweight, and a really simple setup process, which in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that using my Ansible script. Now, it's not perfect, and I'm new to Talos, but this will get you up and running with a minimal HA cluster. As you can see from their website, prominent features of this include security, immutability, and minimalism. It's based all around API access, so that's all authenticated, as I'll show you later in the video. So there's no remote connections through things like SSH, obviously, which can be brute forced. There's predictability in terms of it eliminates configuration drift and unknown factors, and you receive atomic updates. So specific components that are updated in isolation. Also, there's the evolvability. I'm not going to benefit too much from that in a home lab setup, but really important for an enterprise setup. So some of the features, as we said, minimal, hardened, immutable, ephemeral, and current. Interestingly as well, you'll see that it's certified by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, a little bit like with Rancher and some of its other competitors, which is reassuring to see. Now there's a load more to Talos that I'm not gonna cover on this documentation side, but do go and check out all of the how-tos and all of the guides, and it will explain what some of the use cases are for Talos. So you're probably wondering, what does this look like? So over on my Proxmox cluster, you'll see here that I've got Talos CP, that's control plane or master like we're used to, or server in Rancher language. And you'll see that I've got CP1 on this node, CP2 on this node, and CP3 on this node. So that's a triple control plane, a triple master node setup for high availability. You'll also notice that I've got worker two here and I've got worker one here. Now, I've not turned this one on because I want to show you what that looks like when it boots up. But when it does boot up, you'll see it's like this here. If I jump into the console, you'll see that the operating system is running in live mode. So for example, when we boot this one up, I'm just gonna start this machine. You'll see how quickly this boots up. I've only given it four cores and four gigabytes of RAM, but it's super fast. The way this works is it boots into this live mode and it basically just sits there waiting for you to configure the cluster. Now we're gonna jump into Ansible in a moment once this is ready and we'll get this kicked off. You'll notice that when you invoke the cluster and set it up for the first time, it actually then does a reboot and installs this to the drive. So at the moment, this is just running live in memory. And you can see here that it's generated some certificates and everything here and it's just now sat there, it's waiting. So now over in VS Code, I've remote connected to what I use as my Ansible box, which I've used in other videos. You can go and check out my other deployments of things like Docker and Portainer and other Kubernetes deployments, specifically RKE2. And this is gonna follow a similar, albeit different and much simpler process. And that simplicity again is thanks to how easy this is to set up within Talos. Now, if we go over to their website, and if you don't want to use Ansible like I'm going to do in this video, you can obviously check out their quick start guide where you can actually get Talos up and running within Docker really quickly. And that will give you all you need to do to sort of play with it and learn it and decide whether it's for you. And there's also instructions of how to get this up and running just through the command line. And that's basically what I've used to create this Ansible playbook. You'll see that they even have a specific guide for doing this on Proxmox and some handy videos as well. And it's really simple in terms of you just need to install Talos CTL. That's the command line tool, a bit like Cube CTL, which we'll also use later. We download the ISO images. Importantly, there's a version as well down here that comes with the Quemu support. So in Proxmox, you'll actually see things like the IP address of your node, um, and it will give it things like graceful shutdown, etc. After that, really, it's just a case of creating some VMs, which you can see I've done in my Proxmox. Now, you can obviously um, create these like I did using a cloud template and then assigning the ISO to this machine. So here you can see a standard Proxmox template. 
And then for the CD drive, I've just specified here the ISO file, which it recommends on their website. Now, once you've got that set up, you simply need to basically create and connect to your first node. You can see that down here where you generate the configuration file. You then need to create that and apply it. So create the config first, then apply it here. And then you add a worker node in the same way, just changing the control plane to a worker plane. And then you're ready to use the cluster. So you bootstrap it. That basically means to start it with all those configurations in place. And then you can copy basically the cube config file and you could administer your cluster just using something like kubectl. So don't worry if that's a lot. We're going to go through that individually in Jim Garage style now in Ansible. So playing my get out of jail free card, this is far from perfect but this should get you up and running with a bare bones cluster. That is three master or control plane nodes and two workers. There are some other awesome GitHub scripts out there for Ansible that I'll link in the description below. So do go and check those out. Those are more advanced. They have things like Git support where you can deploy this through Flux and also changing things like the CNI for the network layer. This is just basically taking those instructions we've seen and running them through an Ansible playbook in what I would call the vanilla default setup. Now, as always, if you want to submit some PRs, I'll try to do my best to look at those, no promises. And this script might also change over time, but the key components, i.e. what it needs to do to get it set up, those overarching processes should remain the same. So the first thing as always is we want to define our hosts. So these are all the machines that we're basically going to be using to connect to. Now, this is a little bit different to my RKE2 video, whereby we would connect into each node and then run commands to join the cluster. It doesn't work like that in this. This is actually using the Ansible machine, i.e. this one here, 3100, that I'm remoted into, and it's using local host. So this playbook is actually going to be executed on the Ansible machine itself, and it's then going to configure the cluster just using these IP addresses. So this Ansible machine will connect to this node only and configure the rest of it via Talos CTL calls. So once we've got the host set up, we can have a quick look ahead at some of the variables. Now, some of these variables we're not quite using yet, so things like MetalLB and kubevip, and that's hopefully a prelude of me expanding that in the future. But the key things really here, we've got the Talos version, which you can change, the CTL version, so that's that command line tool, and then the IP addresses of your three master nodes. 61 is the one I'm going to connect to first, so think of that as server or master node one. And then the two worker nodes, and also the directories that we're going to save those config files, which we'll have a look at later in the video. As you can see on the left, I've got the roles, and if you're wondering in which order those are executed, you'll find that here in the site.yaml. So the first thing we're going to do is download and install the CTL, the command line tool, which we'll need for basically all of this. So it checks to make sure that you've got that. Then it's going to create the cluster configuration. So first it generates basically a config file. Once you've generated that config file, it then applies that config file and that's where it's going to connect to that first node. Then it's going to configure the Talos CTL. That's actually doing a little bit more. So it's downloading the configuration file after it's applied the configuration file. It basically creates new ones. That will give you everything you need to basically connect other nodes to it and workers. Plus it will generate things like the cube config file. Then we're going to add the actual worker nodes to it. So let's go through those in order. We'll start off with install Talos CTL. So over in Talos CTL, quite straightforward. Um, we're going to download Talos CTL and you get to specify the version if you want to. It's going to pull that down and then it's basically going to copy it to the user local binaries. And that means that all users on there can actually use that, which is great. After this, we don't have to use um, root privileges to, to run Talos CTL. Once we've done that, we get on to configure the cluster. So once we've checked that a config file doesn't already exist, we then want to generate the config file. This isn't necessarily needed for the first time you run it because there won't be one, but I put this in here for some debugging. So it basically generates the config when this is true, so it doesn't exist, and it uses the Ansible built-in command, so it uses Talos CTL, which is what we just downloaded. It specifies that it's going to gen for generate. It's going to generate a config, 
I've just called this Talos Proxmox cluster because that's what's in the documentation, but you can change that to obviously whatever you want. And then if we have a look what it's actually doing, it's gonna connect via HTTPS to that control plane IP, which if you remember in your variables, so this group vars here, you can see the control IP here is 61, which is basically my first node. Now, when it connects to that, it's going to then create that config file. So it's gonna ask for an output directory, and I've just given the config directory as a variable which you can specify. Now, as we're using Proxmox, or I am in this instance, or anything that's basically KVM, kernel virtual machine, you can actually use this image factory here, this image, which will allow the Quemu agent to be deployed and be available. So you'll need to make sure in Proxmox that over on the options for one of these virtual machines, you'll have um, the Quemu agent here enabled. So now we've generated the configuration files. We're gonna go now into the applying the configuration. So the first thing we want to do is to apply that config we just created to that first node. Remember that's that dot 61 in my case. So again, we go into the command line, we use the Talos CTL tool and we apply the config this time. We're doing it insecure because we haven't validated the certificates, but you could obviously do that in an enterprise setup. And we specify the node as the control plane IP that's that 61. You can actually do this to any of the nodes. And we specify the file. So this is basically the directory. So whatever you put in your variables. And what we want is this control plane.yaml. So that's the configuration file for setting up a node as a control plane. It's gonna go through that and then do it. And I've just done it for each node. I was lazy and didn't put in a loop, but I'll tidy that up at a later point. But it's basically doing exactly the same thing. It's applying that configuration to each of these nodes and that'll set it up so you've got now three nodes that are all talking to one another. The cluster isn't yet up and running because we haven't bootstrapped it and that's what we'll get onto now. So now we go into the Talos CTL tasks and it's a little bit more than that actually. The first thing we do is when you create the configuration files in the last step, they're actually blank. So this command here is using that config file and it's specifying an endpoint. I'll show you that later, but basically it's a big text file, a bit like a cube config where the um, endpoint is blank. So what we're doing is saying we want the endpoint to be the control IP of the first node. Then we want to do the configuration of the node and that will also then specify the IP address as one of the nodes in there. And that should also get updated when we add all three into that file so that basically we have all of those nodes listed in there. Next, what do we need to do? Well, when you've applied those configurations, and I'll show this on screen, is because it's a live image that you saw in Proxmox, when you apply those configurations, it then automatically reboots, installs it to the disk, and then boots up using those configuration files. So it's no longer live. That's why we have this wait for a bootstrap. So all this is doing is basically trying to assign by using the bootstrap, that will bootstrap and then start up the cluster and it'll all start talking to one another. It actually starts up the etcd. Now, what this tries to do, and this isn't an elegant way of doing it, it simply tries to bootstrap it over and over until it succeeds. It'll do that for, what, 300 seconds. Now, in my experience, it takes about 15 to 30 seconds for this to boot up. Obviously, that's gonna depend on your hardware and how much you've given it, but this should work. I'll look to improve this in the future. The final step of this is to basically then create or grab the cube control config. So that means that then we can start to control our cluster using kubectl, which if you followed any of my previous videos, you'll be more than familiar with. This will be useful if you want to deploy anything onto your cluster using the command line interface, or even if you want to install something like um, Rancher to put on here and manage it or any other GUI, you'd be, you'd be doing that first most likely with kubectl or perhaps Helm. And that's basically it. If you watched and survived my RKE2 tutorial, you'll know that this is much shorter and simpler. Good job, Talos. So let's get this up and running. So I'm already in the Talos directory, which is where I need to be over on the left for this playbook. Now with the way I have this set up, I need to use Ansible playbook. I need to point it to the site over here. I need to specify the inventory host file, which is here. 
and I need to specify a key file to connect some of those nodes. Don't actually think that's necessary because I'm connecting to a local host, but I've left it in anyway. So if we maximize this here, I'll then put Proxmox over on the left. So now with Proxmox up on the left, let me click on the console and you'll see that there. Let me try and make that a bit larger. So I appreciate that's really small, but it doesn't matter too much about being able to see that. All I want you to see is the fact that this is going to reboot, like I said, and then we can take a look at what's actually happening. You can see on the left here that it's ready and it's getting ready, it's true, but nothing else on here is running. No Kubernetes, no Kubelet, none of that. So let's start the script now on the right. You'll see that it's going to install Talos, gather the facts. It's now configuring the cluster, applying the cluster, and now it's waiting down here and retrying to apply the bootstrap. If we look on the left, this should now get the sign to reboot, which it's doing. So it's applied that configuration file. It's now going ahead and rebooting. That's installing it onto that drive. I can hear my server spinning up over there. And in a few seconds, this should be back up and running. And it should now be waiting and trying to bootstrap. Now you can see on here, we've got some different things come up. API servers, controller managers, schedulers, Kubernetes version 1.30.1. It's now healthy on the left. And you can see that I've got three machines over here on the left. And in a couple of seconds, or maybe a few, ah, oh, I've got four now. And hopefully I should that should go up to five. So now we have five machines up and running. The cluster isn't actually ready yet. If you remember things like my RKE2 video, it's obviously downloading and pulling containers in the background. So that will take a little bit of time, depending on things like your internet connection, the amount of resources each node has. But in my experience, it was usually a minute, two minutes to get this all up and running and to get a ready true in this area here. So if we have a quick look at what that actually did, you can see here that I've got this Talos folder. And now within the Talos folder, we've got a cube configuration file. That's what we need for kubectl. And we also have this dot Talos folder, which it created. Again, the cube, the Talos CTL expects its configuration files to be in here, but you can manually override that as well. And you can see with the control plane, this has got all the good stuff for the encryption keys, certificates, etc., for setting up a control plane. Here you can see what it generated for setting up and configuring the workers. And here's that Talos configuration file where you can see we injected the endpoints into here. And it's also got those certificates. So when we were running those Ansible commands to connect using Talos CTL, it was actually using these endpoints. So it knew where to send the command to. And it had these certificates to authenticate and do that connection securely. So now whilst I've been talking, you can see that that's now true, everything's healthy, and basically the cluster is up and running. Now, I'm gonna come back to this in future videos, but most of what I've already covered in previous videos, most of the things like installing traffic and Pi-hole and all of those sorts of things, this just behaves like Kubernetes. This isn't K3S, this is full fat Kubernetes, but most of the things should work without a hitch famous last words. I haven't actually tried that. I'm going to be doing more of that in future videos and also practicing. But so far, absolutely loving what Talos has done here. Super clean, minimal, ephemeral, secure, ticks all the boxes in my mind. And so if we hop back into the terminal, let's just clear some of this stuff. We can now use the Talos CTL and the cube admin. So I've already installed kubectl. The instructions for that are pretty straightforward, just like you download and install any binary. And now that I have done that, I can run things like kubectl, get nodes and specify that config. And there you go. You can see that I've got all of those nodes there. So we can do things like that or get all of the namespaces. And then we could run something against that. So all of the pods in the cube system, you'll see that they're all up and running. So now you have all the basics to set up a super bare bones cluster and basically do whatever you want with it. Obviously you can refer to some of my existing videos and see if those work. They should do, this is just Kubernetes under the hood, but I will be going further down the rabbit hole with Talos in the future. Anyway, if you've liked this video, let me know how you're gonna use this, if it's something you're considering. And as always, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.